like to call this meeting to order. You don't hear me out there? First, I have on the agenda the six of comments and seven. Well, it says no. Next item I have to do here. We don't have any activities. No questions. First up, uh, discuss the new logo and brand guidelines. Thank you very much. I am so excited to present our new brand guidelines to you. It's just a cleaned up class, is how I like to refer to it. You'll see all the stuff there and it doesn't get any room on the screen. Um, we've simply taken what I'm referring to as a classic team. And we now have available to us all of our uh, vector files, EPS, all the files that we'll need to have really great, really consistent branding across the district. And so you'll see within the guidelines here just some general um, introduction. Of course, we've got this great picture of our 1932 football team, which was the first team to be called the Red Alphabets. And so that, that tradition goes back so far we want to preserve that Red Alpha legacy. Throughout our brand. We'll, we'll see that represented throughout the pages here. In this brand guideline rule, we have now selected our official fonts. So, as part of the logo, we've also incorporated our official fonts and primary secondary color palettes. So, you on page 11, we'll see this another. This is our primary foundation of our visual identity. It remains to be the classic G. On the next page, you'll see that um, we always want to have clear space around this classic G. And we're, have, as we reach out as the elephant for different mediums, we we'll need to maintain that clear space around the logo. The next section is our word mark lockouts. And this is where those official plots are found. So you'll see our first thought is the word of thought. That's what the word being was always in, and then get those fans with what the school would be is in. So we have the games in schools, games in high school, and both games of old school campuses represented in the classic team. Then on page 18 and 19 is where we have some flexibility for that logo. So we have a few options that you can use with elements that we pulled out of that logo, what we call sub brands. Within that, you'll find the elephant head, which is um, used on the back of the business cards that you receive this evening. Or you can open those up whenever, but I think that really has one open. Take a look at the back. Um, so we, we have that isolated head that can be used for athletic branding for sure. Uh, and so you see that on the top row is going to basketball. We also have the isolated G, which is kind of in reference to a letter of check. So you'll see that used more frequently and kind of a reference to tradition. And it should always be accompanied with the word game still. So I know we feel like that's a way to honor that letter and check of G. We also have to go to red. And of course, we have to include the stop. Well, we won't be moving away from the from the stop element, but now we have it digitally. That'll typically be hand-drawn, but we have it digitally as well. We also cleaned up the 1892 crest for the Eastville High School so that that can now be available for graduation announcements, diploma skills, that type of thing. We have that cleaned up in all the appropriate files. And then you'll see if we'll, we'll get in a moment into all our elementary school logos. Just a brief pause on page 22 for some of the logo issues. We haven't had kind of a trigger work um, in recent years where um, we've had some variation. I've seen some white elephants and red seeds. I've seen um, some stretched and misshaped logos. But this will give us an opportunity to know where the logo is housed and be able to find that logo and use it appropriately. Speaking of using it appropriately, on page 24 and 25, you can see some variations off of the Official logo. You can use it in a single color, and oftentimes that's necessary when you're doing things like t shirts where budget is an issue. If budget is priority, you don't have one color to print, then you have these options here black, red, and white. 
speaking of our colors, we also have identified our true red and white. So we have the pen tones, CMYK and hex codes there, so that we know exactly what our colors are and the best way to use those. So we maintain red and white as our primary colors, but certainly these other four colors that are in the secondary palette can be used. This red, I just want to specify that the secondary red is the shading from the outfit. So that, that really is being used very sparingly, um, but it is available when necessary. And then we'll go back to our typography. So on page 28, you'll notice that we did add a supplemental font, which is a cursive font, and that can be used um, when we need to have something that has a little more um, just need for some like invitation. But also for our athletics, so our beautiful women's basketball team will be using this spot on their uniform this year. So you'll see this cursive spot um, used occasionally as well. And then you'll see we have we now have templates for business cards and letterhead, and other templates will be created throughout the coming months. On page 72, you'll see our athletic elephant. So um, this has been referred to in the past as the angry elephant. It's really you know, an example of our, you know, the elephant that we want our opponents to see. So with that in mind, we have the red eye elephant, and we have the, the standard black people who will be seeing something from the red We also have a athletic plot on Google. And that's where the code is red, so I'll just put it in. So that's that's our elementary school section. Right now we need to our elementary school section at Fox on Rapid Our elementary school specifically in each child is certainly one of all that will be represented well under the charter curriculum. So in order to do that, given them all what we call the elementary elephant. So on page 38, you can see the introduction of that elementary elephant. Each school will have the same element. What changes within each school is what is represented on the flag and what is represented in the crest behind the elephant. In some cases, it's quite intentional to include, for example, on none of their different intelligences that are represented in all four intelligences. That's represented in their light bulb, you'll see a ring that it has. And also, you'll see the eight icons for the intelligence of Moving beyond Fair Street, what was most important to us about Fair Street was that we continue to recognize Butler High School and that that continue to be reflected as part of Fair Street's heritage and legacy. And so, you'll see that with Fair Street International Academy, we're able to incorporate the Butler Tiger, but also the international charter status that include the globe behind. That continues with the Games of Exploration Academy and their NASA effort, and then Monday Mill, and then New Holland as a leadership academy. This is an opportunity for them to really focus on that. In Maine, what we've known for the last number of years. Both the shield and Dr. Brown for the state of school a little over a year ago uh, to work with the governance councils and school leadership as well to review what does a knowledge academy mean? What does a learning academy mean? And part of those conversations went back to, well, we're in school, so knowledge and learning are what we do. So what does that mean from an identity standpoint? But part of that process, I'm going to do it. Uh, to go but what that means is the greater guidelines are coming out now. So it starts in the lane of communication for the next school year and school choice. They're going to not, right now it's still not all learning happening, but this is the kind of kick ball hopefully some change. All of these files will be available visually to our entire community to use throughout the world. We want to see this uh, used throughout our community and used well. 
and representing us as often as possible. And so this will be made available on our website in seven days. Do you have any questions? See that point will we be sharing this with the local print shop on the future? Yes, absolutely. And these guidelines will help them to know exactly how to represent us by having those colors and fonts. And that EPS style is really key for those digital printers. That's the question that we have to go to the past. And most importantly, we need to know what we would plan to do if someone were to talk about what we are, the questions we made, and what we would plan to do. Okay, it's now. It's now is going to give us an update on all the sections and activities that are going on with all our campuses. Yeah, we're excited to bring a report this evening on the progress of our projects that made within the last month or so. Uh, and then first we'll start with the Andrew Hill School Lakes. And just before we start the presentation, let me just again share with you just uh, key project information about the middle school. Again, 184,000 square feet, uh, 4,000 square feet field house, uh, 15 science labs, and the consumer science, a healthcare science lab, business lab, construction lab, technology lab. Uh, family, especially family business league, uh, strength and training room, media center, art, and goal, uh, 506 cafeteria, uh, 885 six gymnasium, uh, athletic field, 1106 training center. Uh, work at Nursery in the last two weeks. Uh, they, Actually, we changed a uh, grade of football field, uh, started uh, Curve and Doug, uh, still working on G.9 entrance, uh, still working, second phase is still going on TPO, uh, roofing of the funds, barriers done, 
and uh, trying to make sure that it's going on. Uh, we have some opening shots. Uh, this one is from the Cool Drive, Cool Road, uh, opening shot of the facility. Uh, uh, again, to my left would be the, the main corridor, uh, the admin area. In the rear, there's going to be a very second story. Uh, it'll be anticipated for the down side of the story. They pulled this last bag uh, inside the main area, and of course, we have the cafeteria being in the center, that being in general capacity. So, just the overview side of the entire project, uh, a bit of an extra. I think we get into the field. This is a field house, full house structure, field house, uh, locker room, of course, restroom. So I have to take some of the field. Then just an uh, overview of the site from the end. This is here to my screen left. This shows actually the field. You can see the wall that holds the field. And then the first side of the field is uh, the right side, uh, which can be left at the far right on the side of the left side, back to the field is the left side of the field. So the not field access, that front side, uh, that side, the large field side. Next one is the Ben uh, High School Kitchen Cafeteria. Sure. The last one is probably the Bob from Cox family. Uh, she is still there. She's still living there uh, looking for where she would go. Uh, we would not give her a bed. Yes, yes, it's already, we believe, fifty percent completion. Kitchen cafeteria. Uh, Again, tie down, uh, roof work is already done. The rent main lead is being put in over the site, uh, how it connects to the existing high school main building. Again, more from the further this side, that really shows uh, where the existing uh, CK building, where that was uh, demolished and completed complete parts of the area. You can see just a portion of the existing uh, cafeteria building, and then that's the area where they do the food store is fixed. Again, just main corridor coming in. Uh, this is just some of the treasure work that's all, already been completed. Uh, to my right, also, you can see going down the walls, trophy cases, cases that's inside, built you know, into the wall area. Uh, really, really, really good thing. Again, just another uh, uh, one of the main restrooms, uh, the sink, uh, sort of where you can see the sink area from hallway, so you, know, you, you can have a little more control. Uh, but it also shows how we uh, have the threads or all into the corner of the restroom. And upstairs, the media center just shows some of the finished rooms, the best rooms. Uh, this work, this is the uh, left side of the building, that side of the area that's already been poured. And this is another close up shot of that, that those are doors that come out of the cafeteria uh, on the outside walkway. And all, all that kind of thing is the floor.
measurement of student achievement, but it is one measure of how the Georgia determines whether or not our students are making progress towards meeting the um, Georgia standards of excellence. And that's the main purpose of it. It also provides data on how well our students are performing when you compare them to other students in Pioneer Lisa as well as across the state. So before we delve into the performance data, I want to remind you of the context, not that we need many reminders, but the context in which we tested this past spring. And we, of course, we can't talk about what happened in spring 2021 without talking about what happened in March 22. So everyone recalls the upheaval of the educational systems across the world, and of course, across Georgia, as a result of COVID 19. And in response to that, the State Board of Education um, weighed the requirements of screening administration of 2020 Georgia milestones, EMCs and EOCs, as well as the GAA and other assessments that happened after the March notification that was sent out for uh, the change in the way we're going to address learning and teaching and other across the state. In response to this disruption, I'm going to read some of this to you because I want to make sure that the numbers are I before the director to do that. <laughs> so, as I mentioned, the state board weighed the administration of all state model assessments scheduled for the spring. That's including the accountability pieces, like for in the course, that test typically accounts for 20% of the students' course credit grade. And at um, because of what happened in 2020, all of those accountability requirements were waived. Because of that, we don't have comparative data from year to year. So the information I share with you today is based on 2019, comparing how we did spring 2021 to how students performed spring 2019. One of the main requirements on the accountability pieces that DOE requires is that 95% of all eligible enrolled students participate in the test. And so, even though all of those accountability pieces were weighed in 2020, in 2020, in 2020, yeah, 2020, 2021, all students were expected to test but they were not going to be penalized if the 95% was not met. So across the state, we saw uh, not only a decrease in the performance as far as proficiency in performance on the Georgia milestones, but we also saw a pretty significant decrease in the participation rate of students taking tests during the uh, 2021 um, administration. What I'm excited about is that given we were, given, we were provided the opportunity to relax a little bit about testing and not be as strict on our students, we did not lower our expectations. So uh, when you look at the percentage of students participating in testing across the state and what games were city do, we basically tested almost 100% of eligible students in grades three through eight, which is what we strive for, whether they're the pandemic or not. So in spite of or because of, but in the midst of it, we still have high level expectations for our students. So even though statewide, so for third, fourth, and fifth grade students across the state, the, the participation rate is 79, 78, and 77 percent, respectively, whereas for Gainesville City Schools, it's 99 percent for third and fifth grade. And in some cases, it's a little more than 99 percent because DOE reported at 100 percent. 
but they ran out with that one. But it's the number uh, for us is 99%, which is still above the 95% requirements. So just to kind of keep that in mind. And then for our middle school students across the state, middle school students participated, six, seventh, and eighth graders participated at rates of 69, 65, and 61% respectively. Angel City students participated at 98% for sixth graders, I mean, no, I'm sorry, 99% for sixth graders, 98% for seventh graders, and 97% for eighth graders. Still higher than the 95% uh, requirement and significantly higher than participation that was experienced across the state by other districts. Well, there's a little history that the high school number grade, every grade level class across the state, is going to be below the lowest level. Every grade level class is going to be below the lowest level. So, not every school is going to be below the lowest level. Compared to high school, we test two different times looking at the same distance in the spring. High school was 55. You look at the we were across the district. That means going into this school year, our kids are going to work with this back then. It's very And that's the average of some of the states, some districts or, or systems had a very low uh, participation rate. Yeah. One I think is like 12%. Yeah. 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 And then you look at the other ones that are the state may have
we actually found quite a few what we call rock stars because in the midst of all of that and the state losing, and I don't recall on any of the papers of the state that there was any there were any increases in proficiency. But at our individual schools, there were increases where the state and the least of the decreases. And then not all of the schools that are represented here, but even the ones that are not here, they may not have uh, shown any increases in proficiency, but in many instances, the decrease is as low as 1% or 2%. In some instances, the state's loss is 14 So, yeah, so I, and I just wanted to say that for third grade, their students showed an increase in the number of students proficient in their math ages. So that's uh, the study. So at Pioneer in the state of Georgia, the decrease was by 14 to 15 percent. So for them to not only not have a loss of this thing, they went beyond that and showed some improvement. Thank you. 
that section. So we're going to see the bottom. The current band from the side. Compared to the side of the group. Slightly lower. But the voltage side of the group. We had to go down to the So I decided not to do the end of the show the six or nine small flight. But it does have a slightly large fans in there from America. Uh, we'll have that in there. Uh, the cylinder also underneath will have spray foam insulation that will help out for identity uh, uh, from the uh, number of the things up in there. And then spray foam insulation that the staff will have to And just back to the point of view. Uh, so in that area right there, you'll see on the exterior of the that's the sidewall plan. So you can see how the sidewall is accessible and it comes to the path to the And then inside, I think that's going to be the area that uh, outside the bank right now is going to be inside of it. You've got a lane that comes over the hand tank place, about six or seven spaces there. Any other questions? All those in favor? Thank you. Uh, are, there, are there any discussion? And I mean, I got one to the good, you can update and open the uh, Board members are giving a handout right now based on the moment of uh, actual class bias. Uh, this is the moment. Which we break down by high school and grade level. It also shows you the comparison of now to October of last year, which was the past day of the semester. You can see at the elementary level, uh, we're up about 60 students. Across that many grade levels, that's not a huge number. Thank you, everyone.